Last September, Today Online reported that the National University of Singapore and US was undertaking a mammoth task to overhaul its curriculum. In broadening its students' learning through interdisciplinary courses, the university sought to help undergraduates better prepare for an uncertain world during and beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. But how exactly does interdisciplinary learning achieve that? In today's edition of Career Compass, we investigate the benefits of such an education and other considerations when deciding the subject combinations at university. Our guest today is Associate Professor Chu Fook Tim, Vice Dean of Undergraduate Studies and Student Life with the Faculty of Science at the National University of Singapore. Now, Professor Chu is currently the lead consultant and scientific advisor to several agri-businesses and biomedical and pharmaceutical companies playing a major role in directing their research and development strategies. And we welcome Professor Chu to our program today. Thank you for joining us, Professor Chu. Hey, hi, Stanley. This is for Kim here. Good to have a Good to be here today. We're looking forward to speaking with you right now. Now, back in the day when you picked a course or maybe a discipline of study at university, it was a pretty narrow, uh, specialized field. Was that your experience doing your undergraduate days, Professor Chu? Exactly. When I was just finishing my school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I thought I would just apply for something I, w I was very good at in school. It uh, turns out that uh, the university just assigned me something, a course that I didn't even know and didn't even apply for. Mm. But, you know, over the, t over the years, I turned to enjoy it and love it. But, you know, I wish at that point of time I was given a little bit more latitude and flexibility. And today we have that. Today we actually have a lot more choice. Yeah, today things have really changed, haven't they? I mean, the, the combination uh, and, and permutation of what courses and programs that students can undertake now does cut across not just disciplines, but schools as well. Um, Professor Chu, what do you think has brought about the allowance and, and offering of such a breadth of options to students? I think we just have to understand that we are living in a very different world today. Um, the pandemic itself, has shown us that we cannot just look at things from a single point of view. Um, we are also talking about climate change. Again, you can't just look at that problem. It requires people from different disciplines. It requires people from uh, uh, disciplines that will be quite different from one another. And on top of that, it requires people to talk to one another and understand the different perspectives. Now, because this is what we're going to face, we will probably need to prepare our youth and our people uh, in that direction. Professor Chu, what's interesting is that you are the Vice Dean of Science in the College of Humanities and the Sciences. So, humanities and sciences all in one word there, uh, one in one phrase. Tell us more about this College of Humanities and Sciences and what it offers. Well, I would say we are... Uh, uh, offering students coming into this college a very deliberate curriculum in the first instance. When I say a deliberate curriculum, I've just mentioned that uh, we're going to face a lot of different situations and scenarios in the future. And to be able to prepare our students uh, to face this uh, scenario, we have created or curated a distinct interdisciplinary a uh, common curriculum. And this common curriculum will include uh, things like how we think, design thinking, quantitative reasoning, even thinking about artificial intelligence and so forth, but incorporating also uh, us being Asian, how we become, how we are human, and what the scientific processes are. But that's just the beginning. That's just the first part of the what we call the CHS experience. Moving forward, actually, I think students will come and realize that they have what we call a student-centric journey. This is when they take their own responsibility to design, to craft, and to explore all that the university has to offer. And I'm not just talking about um, the curriculum in, in terms of the majors that they could uh, combine them with. I'm actually talking about even the experience, the life experience, the en enrichments, and, and also the career guidance that 
will come along with the green curriculum. Mm, that's so important. Well, Professor Chu, you personally live and breathe into disciplines. Uh, you develop treatments for allergic disease and also in plant breeding as well. Um, how are they complementary despite you know, how these areas appear to, be, appear to be starkly different? Well, primarily I am a geneticist, basically. But, you know, when we apply our prey into many different areas, we realize that actually when you, you apply them into developing a treatment for disease, you learn a lot of things because um, human genetics have moved very far ahead. And when we then pivot towards, say, plant breeding or plant genetics, we realize that we could learn so much from one field and then adapt them into another. That's the first thing that I've learned uh, when we when we deal with interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary fields. The second thing I've learned would be to, uh, to learn language, basically. In different fields, in, in allergy or in plant breeding, people use different languages. Although we all seem to say that we speak English, actually. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, it's the understanding of the context as well as the ability to provide value for each of these fields that really matters. That's where the interdisciplinary education comes into play. What other sorts of values would interdisciplinary learning bring to students? How does it benefit them apart from what you've just shared about adapting about you know, the different languages and understanding them and also then putting them into practice? I think different fields come uh, with their yeah, different ways of thinking. That's the first thing. Different fields also come with their yeah, different skill sets, tools, and methodologies, or even processes. The third thing would be different fields will come with the different predispositions and even their own biases at the end of the day. An interdisciplinary person will be one who at least would be exposed to all of these the skills, the processes, the tools, the biases, as well as the disposition, let alone the language and, and uh, the value systems that each discipline brings. So I think an integrator, someone who is going to be able to talk across or understand across uh, will be a person who is going to be very valuable in the future because we are going to face very wicked problems in the future. Mm. Professor Chu, share with us uh, some of the interesting subject combinations that we can study or students can study at the College of Humanities and Sciences. Well, as, as far as majors are concerned, we offer up to about 28 to 30 different majors. And we, we already said in our open house over the weekend that students can combine many of these in any combination that they want. And on top of that, we could also combine a major with multiple minors and we have more than 50 different minors uh, that uh, one can actually enhance and, and, and uh, curate for themselves. Some examples that I've mentioned uh, over the weekend include, for example, someone could possibly be interested in uh, the pharmaceutical sciences, you know, and probably that's the area that they want to focus on. But having a second major maybe in communication and new media Maybe also very interesting, isn't it? Uh, someone who probably will go into, say, the pharmaceutical sciences and explain what these drugs or what these vaccines will do, how they work, or even in sales and marketing. I mentioned another combination during the weekend when we had our open house. Someone who may want to work uh, in the field of, say, quantitative finance, and maybe couple that with a major or a double major or even the double degree in Chinese studies, for example. That could be very well someone who wants to work in the field of uh, FinTech, but maybe want to be exposed to the markets in the greater China. There are very many more and there are very many popular ones like life science and psychology. Those are pretty obvious actually, or even life science and public health, social work and psychology. And we have even very many which are uh, uh, very diverse. Physics and philosophy, and in fact, physics and philosophy is something that we have had students 
doing this over the years, but of course, without the structure that we created in CHS, it took them quite a little bit of an effort to be able to pursue uh, a double major in that sense. But with CHS, these combinations and more are possible. Yeah, just hearing you out uh, does make uh, bring to light really the synergies in diversity, even though sometimes it's not very apparent. But when you when you hear you know hear yourself speaking, like yeah, I I am seeing the the connections there. Associate Professor Chu Fook Tim is speaking with us, Vice Dean of Undergraduate Studies and Student Life with the Faculty of Science at the National University of Singapore, and uh, we're talking about interdisciplinary learning today, the value and benefits of them. Now, uh, last week, Professor Bernard Tan, who is senior vice Pro first for undergraduate education at NUS said curriculum flexibility was among the important factors that students consider when deciding where to pursue their undergraduate education. Do you share those views as well, Professor? And how, why is that important to students? I do, I do. And uh, actually, we created this entire ecosystem uh, precisely with that thought in mind. We could have people who really wanted to come to the university and they have already made up their minds, right? For example, uh, we call these the deep specialists. Someone who maybe say, you know, I really want to smash atoms in turn one day uh, and I want to just focus in on, say, doing a lot of physics and maybe uh, and enhance myself in that field. Our curriculum will allow them to be so. In other words, we have a space for deep specialists too. Yet others, maybe the integrators that I mentioned earlier, the ones who want to do a double major or a double degree in the many combinations that I, I gave. But yet others, we call them the versatilists. They may just want to pursue one major that they are very good at, but they want to take a lot of different things and they want to experience very many different perspectives in life and in different topics. These folks may want to enhance themselves with one particular major and maybe take a minor in, on something they fancy, say a language. Mm-hmm. And we have many languages that they could take too. So I think we want to create that multiple pathway. In other words, all of these above will be possible for you. Yeah, and you mentioned those Chinese studies as well earlier and, and some interesting subject combinations. So, Professor Chu, what advice then would you have for students when considering what combination of disciplines and courses to enroll in? Well, I think uh, there will be so many choices and things. It is clear that students may not know, wow, you know, you've served so many things on the buffer table. <laughs> and uh, uh, which one should I try? I would say be brave. Be brave to try as many as you want. Uh, there will be some that you love. You know, just as things spread out on the buffer table, all right? Uh, you taste them. You feel that, hey, I like this. I'll come back to this in a while. But let me go and taste a little bit more there. So be brave to explore a little bit, right? And don't be too worried about, uh, oh, I don't know. I, I don't have a background in this. Will I actually do well or not? Actually... Uh, the university has what we call the great free year and so forth for you to explore and be brave about this. The other thing that I have always heard from um, uh, students would be, um, am I really going to be able to do uh, some STEM courses if I were um, mostly humanities when I was in school or vice versa? Well, I think... Uh, the curriculum in CHS of uh, the College of Humanities and Sciences is actually one that will allow you to learn to be human. And I'm sure all of us are human. <laughs> and I'm sure all of us are able to learn to be better human beings. And that's what we are trying to do as well. The third thing I would say would be um, a, a lot of us will come into the university and, uh, and rightly so worry about will there be a career for us at the end of the day. And some people will say, well, look at the graduate employment survey and make that kind of a decision. Well, to some people that may be right. But to others, and I've heard this over the weekend also when uh, Ms. Cherry Ree, uh, Sherry Ree from Citibank, who was one of our panelists, shared that, you know what? Maybe what you should do is to find your true north and let your true north uh, um, guide you into the direction that you want because once you find a true north that really 
will be the guiding star for you. I would, I would very strongly advise that that would be uh, for the majority uh, the, the true advice for the students. But again, for anyone who has uh, un- been unsure, the university is going to be able to help you, take you one step at a time. There is no one size fit all. Yeah, um, but also bearing in mind how we're all very pragmatic, we definitely want to land a job after we graduate. Have you seen better hiring prospects for those who have deliberately invested in interdisciplinary learning rather than those who perhaps have uh, been you know, taking the more safe route of being very specialized? I think there is a place and that there's a, a, a time for everybody, uh, some who are specialized and some who are multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary. But uh, anecdotally, we have seen students who actually take combinations like these, uh, who actually, for example, uh, precisely land a job, say, in Japan. I've seen a chemist who have taken Japanese study who says, hey, I suddenly became very uh, prominent when I went for an interview with a Japanese company. Uh, that's just one example, but there were very many more uh, who went on to do work in, say, consulting and also in data analysis, but uh, they are also able to present their thoughts and not just so, ah, this is the model I use and so forth, but show that the relevance of what they have done, those people will stand out. Professor Chu, thank you so much for speaking with us. We definitely have a lot to take away from this conversation. Associate Professor Chu Fook Tim is Vice Dean of Undergraduate Studies and Student Life with the Faculty of Science at the National University of Singapore, NUS. And uh, you can also find out more about the NUS College of Humanities and Sciences that uh, we have been talking about also on this edition of uh, Career Compass. Their website address is chs.nus.edu.sg. Now, NUS's eOpen House 2021 is now happening online until the 6th of March. You can join the NUS eOpen House at nus.edu.sg slash eOpenHouse to discover how NUS can maximize your potential and empower you to shape your future. Professor Chu, thank you for speaking with us today. It was my pleasure. Career Compass, in partnership with the National University of Singapore.